So Ben, what? Why do people at Giles Group workshops always get bored? I don't care. Because the instructor keeps babbling on. <laughs> oh, oh man. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of the Jack and Ben Show. My name is Jack and this is Ben. Yo. Hey. Uh, it's been a while but we're back today and today we're going to be talking a bit about uh, how we first got into the web and JavaScript specifically and then talk a bit about how we've been teaching it. I think both of us have been doing a fair amount of workshop type things recently. Yeah. Um, we just want to kind of mull over some thoughts from those, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so to start, Ben, how did you even get into the web? <laughs> well, yeah, because we were talking about this earlier. Uh, yeah. Like, so I think I kind of got in. Like, so the first website I ever made was uh, for my skateboard. I had like this kind of yellow skateboard, and I made a website for it. And it was like it was terrible, but it was it was I was quite I had found it quite fun. And uh, I think just being able to like the openness of being able to just hack something together and get it online uh, kind of drew me to GeoCities. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. What about you? What was your first? I had to build a website for my football team. Okay, cool. My, my dad and I actually built it together. Nice. Yeah, nice. so we bought, I can't remember, an HTML book and then Rachel Andrews CSS nice. anthology book, cool. the Cyber one, which is excellent. It has been updated uh, and it's really, really good. And yeah, we just built it. I think we did use, we didn't even use tables. Um, we went straight onto floats, took us a long time. Pretty sure we had Comic Sans in there. Um, but yeah, built a website to show all the scores from our from our football team. Solid. I know, right? Great. Yeah. Um, so I guess one of the things we were talking about earlier as well was about, uh, like we were both fans of jQuery and still fans, right? Like, yeah. um, I think, so that was something that kind of helped us both along, right? Like, so yeah. you gave a talk about that at Render. Yeah, I uh, did. Which was cool. Thanks. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I think that, to me, the thing that's important about that is the accessibility of the web, right? Like making it kind of easy just to kind of get started and, uh, make people not feel intimidated by it. And Absolutely. jQuery went really far to do that. Yeah, I think my first exposure was copying and pasting a bit of code that did like an accordion or a carousel or something dreadful, but yeah. you know, one of those things. Um, I think jQuery gets a lot of stick for making people be able to write bad code or very inefficient code in, in particular, but actually the way, I would never have been able to write that code in regular JavaScript at that time without being very much put off, I think, totally. And, totally. and struggling with it. Uh, and I think J jQuery is a perfectly valid entry into the, the world of JavaScript. I think what I did after that, and I think what you did as well, was go back a bit and kind of step back and, and learn a bit more about what's going on under the hood as yeah. such. Yeah, totally. Um, and I guess another thing, I mean, so um, I think we both got quite a lot from blogging as well, right? Like, yes. So you, you, particularly you've got the JavaScript playground. Yes. Yeah, um, I had about 500 other blogs before that. <laughs> yeah. My first ever blog was a CSS blog. Was it? Yeah. Cool. I think it might have even been called CSS Wizardry before Harry Roberts had CSS Wizardry, or maybe it was something like that. Sounds um, like Sue. No, it sounds like, you know, he probably had it at the same time. <laughs> His is way more popular than mine, so I'm willing to let him have that. <laughs> yeah, cool. But yeah, I, had a, I found just writing about stuff a really valuable way to get thoughts down and kind of clarify what, what I thought about it. What was your first blog? Oh, uh, so I think the first one that I kind of contributed to, I've not had as many as you, but I had like bfoxel.com and it was just like this random little bits and pieces of things that I was hacking on. But what I found really useful was like, I'm notoriously bad for not finishing projects and stuff like that. Whereas having a blog gave me somewhere to kind of output it. Yeah. Um, and I think to me, like possibly like, GitHub repos are my new blog. <laughs> like, you know, it's just like yeah. And so I kind of create. I created one this morning. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It's been nice. tweeted quite a lot. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> we can cut that out. We can cut it out, right? We're doing so well. We're doing great. So I think we've both been involved in uh, teaching other people how to to kind of program stuff for the web, yes. to build things. Um, so and so you were holding some React workshops earlier this year, right? Like, yes. Yeah. So I did uh, a few times actually. I did a couple for Y October in London, yeah. um, and then one at Scotland JS, and somewhere else as well. I think so. I've done about three or four kind of day long React workshops now, which has been. Really good. I really, if anything, I actually prefer doing workshops to a talk. I find like having 20 or so people for a whole day is, is very different, but I think a bit more rewarding than kind of half hour of maybe a couple hundred people's attention. Yeah. Um, 
And that's been really good. It's been really interesting to see how people learn and what areas people struggle with. And also dealing with like the tooling around React and teaching that and seeing how that gets in the way or not. I think there's a lot of people who think that maybe tools are a big issue and they are in some ways, but it's really exciting to see people kind of pick up these tools and actually they're not half as bad as the stick they sometimes get yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really enjoyable and I learn a lot from it as well in terms of how I can teach things better, React and just generally kind of JavaScript and the rest as well. Cool, cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, no, nice. Uh, yeah, I think I've... I've spoken to people who have like been along and they say good things. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> You're all good. Um, yeah. Thanks. And so yeah. So and also you've been like tons of talks over the last little while. Yeah. Like yeah. It's I think it's always interesting like writing a talk to try and focus on getting people to get as much as out of it as possible and say it's really hard to kind of uh, bring everyone along at the same pace or something like that. Right? Like, which I guess is probably more of an issue with a workshop, right? Yeah, I think with a workshop you have to be much clearer ahead of time what the requirements are for someone to get the most out of it. Yeah. Um, there will always be people who are a bit slower, a bit, a bit quicker. What I've found really nice actually at all the workshops I've done is people have kind of helped each other out along the way. So that, that's one of the best things if someone's stuck and I'm maybe helping someone else or, or whatever. Often I'll come back and someone will go, I don't know, like, Ben helped me with it and, yeah. and got to go. So usually like... There's a sense of the, in the room that everyone's helping each other out as well, which has been really nice to see. Um, so I'm a big fan of the work. My workshops tend to be not me talking all day because that would bore me as much as <laughs> yeah. very much bore the bore me. attendees. Exactly. I mean, I'm, you're bored right now. <laughs> hey, I'm getting um, a bit bored of this. But like, so I tend to do like maybe a bit of talking and then have a couple of exercises or challenges for them to do and rinse and repeat that throughout the day. So that's I found that really nice to keep them kind of hands on, engaged, typing at their own laptops and letting everyone kind of. Often someone will get stuck on the problem and ask a question related to that and from there we'll lead into like a half hour tangent on that particular thing cool. which is like almost the most valuable bits yeah, of the workshop totally. the bits that happen kind of out of the blue. Um, cool. Yeah, something that's kind of cool about that is like, um, have you ever done a note school event or anything? No. So um, there, what's really nice is you get these um, set of 10 tasks that you've got to do to like achieve a particular, to learn about a particular kind of text. So it might be using Express or it might be using um, kind of React or something like that. And you go through each one and try and like work it out and you can skip some if you want, but in a group it works really well because if anyone's stuck in a particular one, then other people who've done it, they can go and help oh, and cool. people can do it at their own pace and stuff like that. Yeah. And it, it works really well as a kind of... That's nice. It, um, we've held it a few times in JS Oxford and it's kind of just run itself. Um, and it's quite nice. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And you've been doing a fair amount of JavaScripting as well. Yes, you? yes. You've been at some... Some tent in a field somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> I was in a tent in a field. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this weekend I was at um, EMF, uh, Electromagnetic Field, and I gave my first ever proper workshop that I'd written myself, um, cool. which was a little bit shaky, but um, I was using a new tool that I'd written, which is this, um, I'm calling it CoJS, uh, for like collaborative JS. And it's kind of like an in-browser editor that you can cast to other people. And what it lets you do is um, you can describe, you can go through a code example, typing it, and everyone can be watching along on their okay. own computer. And it's like, it's quite early days, like I've been writing over the last couple of weeks, but it's kind of cool. Like it is kind of, it creates quite a nice environment for people to be able to kind of share their code and work at different rates and stuff yeah. like that. So, because I think, <clears throat> the thing that I find is like, I really, I really dig talks. They're awesome. Uh, Size-wise, like you can, you can go to talk and like listen for half an hour and you've learned quite a lot. Workshops are super cool, but you need to be there an whole entire yeah. day. And I feel like this is kind of like taking part of the workshop style of seeing code and playing with it, but cramming it into a smaller yeah. amount of time so you don't have to kind of worry about getting any tools installed or yeah. anything like that. So that's something that I've been doing. And so the tool is just an editor with uh, an iframe, but also does some like code translation stuff as well, okay. um, using Buble and roll up. Nice. You're fans of. God, you're so hip to using Google. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. No. Yeah, it's great. Right. Yeah. So, we were talking a little while ago about tools and stuff yeah. and workshops. Yeah. So, yeah, without fail, every workshop I've done, there will be someone, for whatever reason, on whatever laptop, like not even like just old Windows machines, all sorts of devices, who's like, no Jess will fail or like, yeah. Babel won't work for some incredibly obscure reason. And that's the worst, actually, because. Like, really, I, I don't know what to do to fix totally, those. Other totally. than a few very common errors, all I'm going to do is, is Google them. Um, so, so that often, I've actually been building a tool 
which I tried out one of the workshops which I would use in the future, which is the same, sounds pretty similar to your collaboration thing, but is a React editor. Uh, so people can go to a website and they have an editor on the left and a kind of viewport, if you like, on the right hand side. The beauty of this is they don't have to set up any of the tooling around React, any of the like Babel to do JSX, um, Webpack to bundle it all together, or NPM to install things, none of that. It's all set up behind the scenes in the browser. Uh, they write code, they just have to define a component with a certain name and it will magically get rendered to, to the, the browser and let them see it. And because it's all in the browser, they can ping up the React dev tools and still inspect it and do all the rest of it. Uh, but it, I found that to be really nice to just get people started. And it's, I, I use that for the beginning of the workshops. We'll come in, put the laptop down, go to a URL, and be straight in with the, the exercises and this kind of lessons and stuff to, to guide you through. So I think sometimes if people go in, sit down, they have to clone a repo, run like npm yeah. install, etc. Yeah. that can often be a bit of kind of like momentum killer, yeah. uh, particularly when something goes wrong and then everyone else is ready to start and one person is struggling because their computer's not playing ball. Uh, so I find it interesting how we both kind of ended up on this, yeah, totally. this website approach <laughs> to, to the problem. Yeah, yeah. No, go yeah. us. Go us. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, and do you want to talk about ES 2015? Yeah, so I was, yeah. <laughs> this is our other discussion. Yeah. So basically what the show is we take discussions <laughs> that we've had in the office yeah, yeah, yeah. and put them in front of the camera. So, uh, another discussion, yeah, totally. Yeah, let's another. pretend we've never had this discussion yeah. before. <laughs> okay, cool. So... How do you feel about ES 2015 for, <laughs> for learning JavaScript? Like, what an interesting question. Though. Yeah, just on the yeah. Spot. Uh, So I really like ES 2015. I like nearly all of the features it provides. Um, I think we've learned a lot from the way it was released and so on, and now we're going to much smaller releases, which we've covered, I think, in a previous Jeff and Ben show. But I think there is a danger that some of the new features are really good, but not necessarily as easy for beginners to pick up upon. I think. A very easy example is arrow functions are very concise, which is great if you are comfortable with them. But I think for a beginner, they can these are some code that looks scarier than it than it actually is in reality. So I think we need to actually, if, if someone came to me right now and was like a complete JavaScript beginner, I don't think I'd cover any ES twenty fifteen, like not a single bit of it. I yeah, I as as we might have discussed before, I agree with that entirely. Like, I think because um, I mean arrow functions are cool when you know the problems with this binding or something yeah. like that you know and it's but then i think looking at them afresh it can sometimes be a bit obscure then on the same hand it's like stuff like um kind of for each iterators and stuff like that um that potentially makes things a bit yeah clear uh, so there's a talk at render about that um which we'll link to in the, the notes but it's like yeah. um just <clears throat> be able to explain things like for each but sometimes like if you've got it like linguistically accurate, then people kind of can hook onto it a bit easier. Yeah. But I mean, I think it's always really hard to see kind of coding concepts that people are coming to like from from their point of view. Like it's like some of the some sometimes code just like so obscure and yeah. de de detached from stuff. So, yeah. 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 I think a lot of if you if you teach non ES twenty fifteen first, there is an appreciation for what the new features are adding. Destructuring yeah. is another good example. Like totally. oh, rather than having to do these three variable lines, totally. I can just pull them all out in yeah. in one. So yeah, I think there's a balance. Um, classes again, just kind of syntactic sugar. I wouldn't want someone to just pick up ES twenty fifteen classes without having a vague idea of what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Behind the scenes. Uh, but you also have to draw a line somewhere. It's like there are some really nice array methods added in ES5, like map and select yeah. or filter. I can never remember which one it is called. Filter. Filter. I think it might be select in Ruby then. Yeah. It's one of the two. Anyway, whatever it is, um, there's like sum as well or every and, and all of those. And I would teach those from the from the beginning, I think. So be interested to see like maybe because ES2015 is still relatively new, we think this, but maybe in a couple of years yeah. we might think ES 2015 is the baseline. So it's yeah. interesting to see where that, that line moves over, over all time. All very interesting. It's just so interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so I guess, finally, perhaps, uh, what we could talk about is how people can help other people learn. Like, yeah. What are the kind of things that you can do? Absolutely. Yeah. Because we're just making this up as so we go along. <laughs> yeah, <but> totally. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a big misconception that you have to, you know, we, we're no experts in this, right? We just like doing it and I think there are lots of people who could probably do it just as well if not much better yeah yeah, 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 that's fair. yeah I guess that's fair <laughs> uh, yeah totally. alright much better than me <laughs> about the same as you ben. Yeah. cool that works, um, that works cool so what would you say is that if I'm watching this as someone who wants to kind of get started maybe teaching a bit what, cool. what do you go so I'd say like so um, 
one of the things that I help do is I help organize a, a meetup up in Oxford, a uh, kind of JavaScript web group. And we're always looking for people to kind of like contribute talks and um, that can be a really great way if you've got, if you've learned something, if you've kind of got something to share, um, get in contact with that group and it's, it's such a kind of like, it can be a really rewarding experience yeah. to kind of share that information, really useful for people. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's definitely like the, a very low pressure environment exactly. as well. I think people are also surprised about how few people actually propose talks to meetups. Totally. I think a good example of this is I was looking at the London Node user group website the other day. I think our colleague Alex linked us to it and they've got a GitHub repo for proposing talks. And this is London Node group. They have a load of members and their meetups are usually very busy and they have maybe two talk proposals. So I think most meetups are like absolutely desperate for, for people to go and do yeah, talks. Definitely. And everyone there wants you to do a good talk but is willing to kind of go with it and support you and they're fairly chill because everyone's just come from work they don't want like a really you know it's not too intense it's pretty relaxed there's usually like beer or, or drinks available so it's a nice environment yeah totally yeah um, and yeah another thing like so at JSOX we also organise a few hack days and like as I was saying with the, the Node School one you kind of you can go and attend it and then you'll end up at the end teaching other people yeah and that's like a really kind of great way of kind of disseminating knowledge and stuff and absolutely so, yeah uh, it's worthwhile just doing stuff yeah yeah and then there's blogging yeah i think we both think is a very good way to also check that you know what you're talking about as well yeah i mean where a load of my blog posts have come off the back of me learning something and immediately blogging about it and that's not me being like and you know that knowledgeable about a particular topic is like, i just learned something cool and i want to get this down on paper because other people find it cool there's a really interesting thing which is like as soon as something you need to get over is as soon as you realize how to do something you i sometimes instantly feel like everyone already knows it yeah and it's like this kind of like okay i've just been working out this thing and it's like oh i'm sure everyone already kind of they don't need me to tell them but it's like actually just doing a quick post or a tweet or yeah. something like that is actually really powerful yeah absolutely and really going to be useful to someone yeah i think looking at my like blog stats some of my most popular posts are ones from two three four years ago about stuff that you'd probably imagine are like oh most you know nearly everyone knows that but yeah, yeah there's so many people come into the web Tell from you. all levels exactly. that, yeah, people always need to know stuff now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's the thing. <laughs> cool. So we like to round off the show by doing any other business where Ben and I pick some things that we found cool recently. Uh, so Ben, what have you found cool recently? So the coolest thing by far was Electromagnetic Field, which was a kind of, uh, I, I guess it was like a kind of tech event that I was at last weekend. And it was all, it was like a festival and there was like, there was tons of stuff going on. It was just mind blowing. Um, cool. This is the badge from it, like the lanyard. Nice. So it's actually, uh, yeah, it's you can program it and do whatever cool. you want. With. It's a pretty good badge. It's a very good badge. Could you program it to have a different name? Uh, yeah, but then uh, I think, yeah, you probably could do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, but you're not having it. It's mine. Oh, okay, fair enough. Right. Um, and, and on that event, like, so I am helping run Cold Retreat. It later this month, which is a, a event up in Oxford, which I'm really excited about. And that's about, um, it's a hack day, but a hack day about bettering the way you make code. Cool. Uh, which is cool. Um, and then lastly, my, my last pick is um, you, uh, Jack. It's like, yeah, just like, I really appreciate you. And Aww, I think thank you're you a really very much, ben. great guy. Thanks. Yeah, cool. Uh, uh. I'll pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, what a have heartfelt you... moment. That was a bit of a. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, did you feel that? Yeah, I felt, felt it. Felt it. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I, that, that's my kind of pick. So nice. Have you got any, any other business? I have got any other business. Uh, I've got two pretty cool things from the world of JavaScript. Uh, the first is. Facebook released a thing called Create React App, which is a command line tool for creating React apps. <laughs> cool. uh, funnily enough, <laughs> what a shocker. Uh, so the idea behind this is people get bogged down when starting React and setting up Webpack and Babel and, and all the rest of it. Create React App kind of is one command you run that has it all set up for you and it, it kind of ships a bunch of stuff out of the box cool. for you. Uh, so it's really, really good for people who just want to get started with React. I would, for example, probably use it in my workshops uh, because people don't have to manually set up a bunch of stuff. It got some criticism around like because it abstracts all the like lower level tools away, but I don't see that as an issue because I think it's a tool very much for beginners. I think the people who wouldn't use this tool shouldn't use that tool. Like I probably won't use it for my projects because I like having full control, but I'm comfortable in that the webpack like config and the environment. But if you're brand new to React and you want to get going with an app, it's 
spot on. So that's really nice. Sounds great. A very small part of that, which I particularly enjoy, is they, they include an eject command. So you can run react create app eject. And if you've in your existing react app, and it will actually um, remove itself and give you all the config. So you can then take that as a base to build on. So you can kind of like create this app with the tool. And then when you want to customize it, just ditch the tool and move on, which is a really nice approach. Yeah, cool. Uh, and finally, saw a tweet a couple of weeks ago by someone on the Google Chrome team. They're very close to bringing a headless version of Google Chrome. You can actually run it now, but I think there are some very involved steps. So I haven't attempted it. But this means like the hacks of kind of PhantomJS and those other tools should be able to go away and be replaced with an actual headless version of Chrome, which should make browser testing uh, way easier. Awesome. So that's really exciting. That is exciting. Yeah. And finally, uh, this is going to be my last Jack and Ben show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. the heartstrings. Uh, sad to be saying that I'm moving on from Pusher uh, this week, so this is the last time that we'll be recording together, at least on the Jack and Ben show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we'll meet up yeah, outside of work and, and do something. Record ourselves having a beer. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll be back in another guise. But for for now, this is the last uh, last Jack and Ben show that, that I'll be on. So yeah, it's been it's been good, Ben. You're a, you're a good guy. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. You're welcome. I was feeling a lot right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. Uh, well, yeah. So catch you catch you later or like never. <laughs> <laughs>